Welcome back to Get Well Acadiana with Dr. Kevin. Thank you so much for joining us on the show today. This is the show where we discuss all matters of health and wellness and tips that you can do to make your health better for your future so that you can live a a longer, happier life. So I really appreciate you joining us on the show today. I'm here with my co-host, Brandon Como. Brandon, how are you this morning? Doc, I'm doing good. We're uh, right before Christmas. I mean, right around the corner. Man, I tell you, uh, everybody seems kind of scrambling around and rushed and trying to get the last-minute shopping done. Me, I, I Amazon pretty much everything. Nice. So, yeah. Man, it's nice. You know, you click a button, it's at your house in two days. So, uh, <laughs> yeah, I don't go fight that uh, that shopping crowd for anything. Yeah, it's, it's well, I had to fight it a little bit. But fortunately, uh, me and my wife got a bunch of our Christmas shopping done on a day when the traffic wasn't awful, awful. Yeah. And so um, I kind of feel like we got off a little bit there, made it into like a date day kind of thing. <laughs> but, man, uh, it was just good to get it all done in that one day. Yeah, knock it out, mm-hmm. knock it out. Well, um, that's kind of a, a, the subject that I wanted to talk about today. You know, this is the time of a year where, you know, kids uh, get extra toys. And parents are generally aware of the choking hazards. You know, there's, a, there's always so much made out of choking hazards. Mm-hmm. But there's a hidden danger that parents need to also be aware of that a lot of them aren't. And that's what I wanted to talk about on today's show. And that is the amount of toxic chemicals that leach out of these toys and how they affect our children's health. And then also we're going to talk about ways that you can avoid that. Or, you know, the truth is, Brandon, you can't avoid it. The Mm -hmm. best thing you could do is reduce it. Yeah. Um, You know, I used to, um, before I had my son, you know, I'd talk about this for years and I would always tell people, you know, don't let your kids put toys in their mouth. And then I had a son and realized that's literally impossible. So what I say now is try to cut it down between like 50 and 70%. You know, if you can just, the goal here, because, because listen, knowing what I know about this subject, you can make yourself crazy. If you say, I I have to avoid all chemical exposure in my kids, you cannot do that. It's going to happen. They're going to put stuff in their mouth, but I'm going to show you today how you can reduce it and just be aware of it. And you know, try to at least pay attention to this and and limit the amount of chemical and toxic exposure, you know, that your kids get. Because the thing is, these toxins build up in their body over time. You know, sometimes parents think, well, I mean, it, it didn't make them sick, you know, right away. Like they think, is it going to make them sick right away? And if it doesn't, they don't think it's harmful. But these things build up in their body over time and it can dramatically affect your child's health. In fact, the truth is it is affecting our children's health. And it's way worse than anybody knows. Yeah, when I was kind of preparing a little bit for uh, today's show, I was looking up one of the biggest problems with toys is the amount of lead that's within them. Yeah, it's it's a huge, huge problem. And, you know, we're going to talk about this in a little about, while about lead, but, you know, parents think, Well, yeah, they found that toy with the lead in it. So, you know, the government took care of that and they they got all the lead out of toys. Mm. Completely not true. Um, They recalled that one toy and, you know, a small percentage of the toys actually went back on the recall. Nobody pays attention to that. And and so it's it's a huge problem. And the thing that, that, that people need to be aware about this is, you know, like I said, it builds up over time. But toxins contribute to some of today's most complicated health problems, things like attention problems and behavior problems and cancer and depression and, you know, even things like diabetes and thyroid problems and reproductive problems and obesity. Now, the the U.S. is regulated. Toys in the United States are regulated by an organization called the Consumer Product Safety Commission. And so most people think, well, yeah, you know, that they keep our toys safe for kids. That doesn't necessarily pan out that way because this organization is completely reactive. What I mean by that is that the Consumer Product Safety Commission is, is they have to wait on a complaint to be filed and then an investigation takes place. And then after all of that, then they look at the toy. So in other words, let's say you have a high chair Mm -hmm. and 
the, the side comes off of it and your child falls out and hurts themselves. And you report that to the Consumer Product Safety Commission. Well, they get 500 other of those reports. Now they get one of those high chairs, do an investigation and say, yes, there's a flaw here. And then they go do a recall on that. We've all heard things recalled, you know, child seats and that. But chemical toxins in toys really don't work that way. You know, it's not that it affects them, that one toy, that one time. This is something that builds up over time. And so this is a huge area that is missed whenever it comes to toy safety. And these cheap toys from China and other countries are emitting toxins into your child every day. And these toxins build up and cause them to have health problems sometimes as a child and sometimes it can even build up and it doesn't start to cause them problems until, you know, they're an adult. And the truth is the, these toys in countries like China have much less regulation than in the United States and Canada and Europe. But, I mean, how many toys are made in the U.S. these days? You know, almost none. Um, now, if you choose to avoid these t toys that are made in China, you're going to have a pretty bored child <laughs> because – there's literally almost nothing made that, that, you know, that doesn't come from China these days. So we're going to give you three or four main things to look for after this next break and things that you can do where you can actually look at the coating on the toy and see if it's a, t a toxic plastic or not. And I'm going to give you some other tips on ways that you can, you know, treat the toys before your, your child actually plays with them. That might help. So right after this next break, we're going to get into all that. So don't go away. Welcome back to Get Well at Katie Anna with Dr. Kevin. Thank you so much for joining us on the show today. We're discussing some things that you need to be aware of at Christmas time and with the toys that your kids are exposed to and ways that you can make those toys cleaner and safer as far as the chemicals that they're exposed to as they open those toys. So you were mentioning earlier, uh, you're mentioning your son, and I've met your son. He's a really good kid. Thank you. And you were mentioning getting all your stuff on Amazon. And I want to go back to when, you know, your son was really, really young, and you started really looking into this and seeing, oh, my goodness, all of the lead and all of the uh, uh, other chemicals that are in these toys, now I've got to be really conscious about this. I mean, you take an, a regular parent that's super conscious about what goes into their child, and then you combine that with the knowledge that you have because of what you work in. Talk about kind of trying to balance that out with making sure that your son was happy for Christmas. Yeah, and so a couple of things that, that we can do there. Um, so when you really start studying this, when you really start looking, which I did when I had my son, I really was interested in knowing about this. And that's kind of, you know, uh, I kind of knew about it before and I always told people to, to avoid this before. But when I had my son, I really started diving into this for yeah. him, yeah. you know. Mm -hmm. um, it's alarming yeah. when you really look at what are, what's coming out of these toys and what these uh, uh, toxins and hormone disrupting chemicals do. If if you listeners out there actually knew what I knew, you would be alarmed. It, it almost feels scary. like the government secrets, the people that know the government secrets, yeah. and they're saying, you don't want to know it, we know. <laughs> you don't want to know, yeah. <laughs> um, and, and, you know, like I said, you can make yourself crazy if you try to avoid all of these, so yeah, you yeah. just have to do your best. So here's what we would do. There's a couple of brands of toys. Melissa and Doug is a really good one. Sprig is another one that's really good. And, you know, I always would try to get toys – that were old school, you know, wooden things where he can build and, you know, things that were more more like what we had when we were kids, you know, where he can invent things and build things. Yeah. Um, but the other thing is that any time he got a new toy in, the very first thing that we did, and we made a game out of it, is we gave it a bath. Oh, yeah. You know, uh, yeah. and we would open it. Because what happens, mm -hmm. parents will get a toy, they'll pop it out of the bag, hand it to their kids, yeah. they grab it, they put it right in their mouth. Yeah. That's yeah. the highest level of toxins because it comes straight off the factory line. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So anytime he got a new toy, the first thing he would do is he'd get his stool at the sink. That's smart. And we would give it a little bath. That's smart. Yeah, and he <laughs> and we made a fun, uh, it was always fun. And yeah. like if he got a new stuffed animal or mm -hmm. some kind of a plush toy, 
first thing we did was we gave it a bath in the washing machine, and, <laughs> uh-huh. and then we let it sit outside to dry. Well, that's cool because not only is it is it making it safer for your child, but it also makes the child feel. I don't want to say more at one with the toy, but more yeah. because of the fact that, you know, the child, you know, as a child, you have to take a bath and be clean and all that. Exactly. And you're doing the same with your toy. It makes it more identifiable with the toy. Exactly. Cool. Exactly. And what you're going to find out later in the show is companies have actually caught on to this now and they're doing really tricky things like, you know, there's such a thing as BPA free toys. And I know you guys have probably most of you heard of that. Uh, we're going to talk about BPA in a little while, but you know, the companies now switched it to another chemical called BPS, which is bisphenol S instead of bisphenol A, mm. which is actually just as toxic, if not more, but they put BPA free on the label. So what's so the I point mean, of putting that in a toy? Well, what BPA does is it makes plastic flexible. Okay. So in other words, you could take a water bottle and squeeze it and it won't crack. Okay. These, that, that's an additive in plastics. You know, some of this stuff, it's really, mm. you know, it's kind of complex to have to put that in there. But, you know, a couple of the things that you should really watch out for. Oh, oh, and back to the bath. Mm -hmm. We would use a green cleaner Mm -hmm. that's something that's non-toxic that we can use. And we would give it a bath and then we would dry it, you know, and he would join in really fun. But, you know, the the soaps themselves can have phthalates and BPA in it. So, you know, you want to use a, a green cleaner for that. But one of the number one things to be aware of, like you mentioned at the very beginning of the show, is lead. Um, A lot of press has been made over lead in toys a few years ago, and people probably thought, well, yeah, they found that out, so that problem has been solved, and it has not. There's no comprehensive ban on lead in toys in the United States. I have no idea why, Um, but lead can cause damage to a child's central nervous system. What is that? That's their brain. That's their emotions, their behavior, their concentration. Lead can throw all of those things off. Lead also dramatically can affect the reproductive system. And so lead's one of the main things we find with infertility problems in in adults. So lead really messes up the way your system works. And it's illegal to paint toys with a paint that contains 0.06% lead. But recently, Mattel got caught with a lead content of 11%. That's 180 times the legal limit of lead that was in toys. And so we always test the kids that we work with in our office for, you know, maybe concentration problems or behavioral problems or, you know, emotional things like that. And we always test them for heavy metals if they're having any of these kind of childhood type problems and we find them at alarming levels sometimes, you know, in in, in kids. And, And the other thing while we're on this subject of lead, sometimes little girls will wear, um, you know, the little cheap metal jewelry, like the little bracelets and the little necklaces and the earrings. Maybe they come out of a coin operated machine or, you know, maybe they got them, uh, a, a real inexpensive jewelry. These sometimes, 70% of these sometimes contain lead. And these things can also contain another chemical or a heavy metal called cadmium. Cadmium and lead has been found in 70% of those cheap, you know, coin operated jewelry, like uh, gumball machine jewelries. Mm-hmm. So you really want to not do that if you can. And, uh, you know, if your little girl wants to wear jewelry, give her some of your old, good, you know, some of your real silver, maybe some stuff that you don't wear anymore. Mm-hmm. Well, let me ask you this. If it's a jewelry set that is the new trend and she really wants it and you want to get it for, uh, how, how would you recommend cleaning it? Like you talked about giving the toys a bath earlier. Yeah. Can you do something similar with the jewelry? It's a tough one with metals because yeah. it's going to keep coming out, yeah. you know, and that yeah. rubs on their skin yeah. and that soaks through their skin. So it's really tough, you know, mm-hmm. to do that. And, you know, if there is something that was the latest like that, I would research it and yeah. maybe, you know, look at the company and maybe even call customer service and ask them, yeah. you know, what's in it. And, and um, uh, hopefully it won't have that in there, Yeah, you know. Um, one of the most harmful things that kids need to be aware, that parents need to be aware of for their kids is PVC. PVC will have a number three code in the triangle, and this is nicknamed poison plastic. 
And believe it or not, it's been found in teethers for babies to have PVC in it. But the number one place you see this is in the blow-up toys, like beach balls and uh, pool toys. So I'm always very aware of this. If we have like the floaties in the pool that are blow up, you know, or they'll have like a, the kids will be in the pool and they'll have a blow up beach ball mm -hmm. and it'll be kind of out of air. So they pull the thing and they start put, they put their oh, mouth on yeah. it and try to blow it up. Yeah. I always do that for them okay. just because you're going to get exposed to PVC and yeah. I'd rather me get it. You know, well, if you're course. a parent, you know, you'd rather take it than your kid. Yeah. So I always say, let dad do it and yeah. I'll blow it up for them uh, just so they don't put their mouth on that. So you just have to really watch things like that by being aware and just little small changes, you know, um, but they find these PVCs also in bath toys, and that's bad because the hot water of the bath makes these chemicals come out at a higher rate. Wow. Um, PVC and phthalates have been banned in Europe, 12 other countries, and California, but in the rest of the U.S., now nah, keep putting in kids' toys, but it's banned in California and 12 other major countries all over Europe. They all ban phthalates, but we keep putting it in baby bottles and teethers and toys and, you know, a lot of things. So that was a number three in the triangle, and that's called PVCs and phthalates. Now, let's talk a little bit about BPA because I've mentioned that several times, and BPA is what gives plastic flexibility. Sippy cups, baby bottles, hard, clear plastics a lot of times will have BPA, and BPA has been proven to cause a whole host of mental problems like depression, anxiety. It's been linked to hormone disruption. As a matter of fact, Brandon, get this. Mm -hmm. The average age of puberty in girls 50 years ago was about 13. Okay. Now the average age of puberty in girls is around nine. Yeah, man. And, you know, you've seen these girls. You're like, she's how old? Yeah. Like how? She just looks, you know, five years older than she is. Right. That's because there's so much BPA in our girls' bodies that it has literally changed the average age of puberty. That's how, you know, that's how alarming this is, is that it's changed the average age of puberty in girls from them having so much exposure to BPA. And the reason that happens is BPA is very similar to estrogen. If you look at the chemical makeup of BPA and the chemical makeup of estrogen, mm. it's an estrogen mimicking chemical. So, okay. it, so it reacts a lot like estrogen in the body. So then, okay, for, well, two questions then. First, is BPA ad affecting more girls than they are boys? And then the second question is, for boys, how is it affecting them if it works like estrogen? Well, imagine if what would happen if you give a little boy estrogen. Yeah. I mean, just think about that's, it. You know, that's well, a, that's what I thought. That's a female hormone. Uh, yeah, that's it's what I thought. not a good thing to have okay. in there. I mean, it's very, yeah. very alarming. Yeah. And there's so much of it out there that, yeah. that it's in literally everything. So BPA is in plastics, like I mentioned. But the other place, and this has been going on since the 50s, is they line canned foods with BPA. No. So what happens if they don't line canned foods like green beans, carrots, those kind of things, canned foods, if they don't line that with BPA, the, the food would get the metallic taste from the can. And so they use this BPA-containing uh, spray to line the inside of the can so that the food is insulated from that. And so we now know that, you know, canned food is, is pretty harmful because it leaches, and especially tomato-based because the acid in the tomatoes – will pull that BPA chemical out at a higher rate. So um, we always try to find um, organic canned vegetables, and you'll see a little symbol on there that says BPA was not used in this can. It's kind of interesting. Oh. So, you know, you'll, you can actually see that on organic canned foods. It'll say no use of BPA in the can lining. So then on the organic canned foods, does it have a little bit more of the metallic taste, or do they make an extra special effort? To, to figure that out. Yeah, I think they've used something else that's okay. non-toxic. I think it's some kind of a, um, a paraffin-based liner that they use in there mm. so that it doesn't, uh, doesn't have that taste. But BPA it is proven to cause thyroid issues, ADD, depression, anxiety problems, hormone problems, diabetes, obesity. I mean, think of the health problems that 50 people or even 10 people around you have. You know, this is the issues that everyone is suffering with. Obesity problems, diabetes problems, hormone problems. And this is where a lot of this stuff's coming from. I really feel, the reason I talk about this so much, guys, is I feel 
our biggest health challenges in the next four or five decades in American healthcare is how do we deal with the side effects of what we're putting into our environment and into our bodies and into our toys and food and all of this chemical reactions, I think is going to be one of the biggest health challenges over the next four or five decades. And of course that includes all the iPads and the iPhones and all yeah. that as well. huh? Exactly. Yeah. So let's get into that a little bit more. I'm going to talk about two more chemicals and I'm going to give you some tips on how you can fix all of this when we get back from this next break. So don't go away. Welcome back to Get Well Acadiana with Dr. Kevin. We're talking about ways to keep your kids safer and healthier by reducing the amount of chemical toxins and exposures that, that they get from uh, some of these cheap Chinese toys that, that you know, they're all exposed to. So, so far, we've really discussed phthalates, which phthalates mainly are what keeps plastic soft. And it's found in everything from nail polish to lotions to uh, makeup, shampoos, um, of course, lots of plastics, inflatable toys, blood storage bags, medical tubing, and, and actually very high levels in baby bottles and baby wipes. And, and phthalates have proven to be hormone disrupting, uh, obesity, insulin disruption, uh, all kinds of issues that, you know, is kind of what we're seeing in today's society. And we're the only country in the world that does not regulate uh, phthalates. And, and so for some reason, we do not. Um, and then we discuss BPA, which is also found in plastic toys and food containers. Anything plastic usually has BPA in it. You will know this because the triangle on the plastic will have a number seven in it. If you see a number seven in the triangle, you'll know that that one has BPA in it. And BPA is a hormone disruptor known to uh, affect breast cancer, prostate cancer, early onset of puberty in girls, behavioral and concentration issues in kids. So that, you know, that's a really uh, uh, prevalent uh, chemical that we see. And then there's atrazine, which is one of the most commonly used pesticides. And, and this has now been, you know, proven to be a possible carcinogen. And, you know, pesticides are on lots of fruits and vegetables. The other one that you should be aware of is something called perfluorinated chemicals. These are your nonstick chemicals. These resist grease, water, and stains. So in other words, your Scotchgard carpeting or your Scotchgard that they sprayed on your couch, your Stain Master carpeting, um, your Gore-Tex clothes, all of those have perfluorinated chemicals to resist water and stains. Also, Teflon cookware in your kitchen. So Brandon, you know how they'll have a, a Teflon pot or a pan in the kitchen and it'll start to chip on the bottom. Mm -hmm. Well, those chips are perfluorinated chemicals and perfluorinated chemicals are, and are proven to cause obesity things, thyroid problems, hormone problems, cancer, even asthma, birth weight problems. So all of these chemicals are things that we're just literally bombarded with guys. And, you know, so like I said, you can't avoid it. They're out there. If we can just hope to reduce it a little bit or even 50% in, in our kids and then also come up with a plan to get some of these things out of their body, and especially if they're suffering with things like concentration issues or, um, you know, behavioral problems or, or any kind of obesity or any kind of other health problem, this is something that you may want to look into on, on possibly getting rid of for them. Now, in 1976, the government passed the Toxic Substance Act. But the problem with that is they left 62,000 chemicals grandfathered in that were never looked into. And there are, you don't really have to test something before it goes on the market. Everything is reactive. You know, it has, it's put on the market. And then if there's a problem found out, then they take it off the market. And it really should be the other way around. We really should have to prove that some of these things are safe in toys and baby bottles. And, you know, you would think it would just be common sense, but it's just not. You know, the chemical industry is very powerful in the United States. Mm. And uh, they have a lot of lobbying money to, to, to make sure that they're not regulated near as well as they should be. And listen, guys, I'm not one for regulation. I'm on the other side of the, 
you know, I'm on usually on the other side of the political spectrum from that. Uh, but these are things that, you know, are affecting people's health. Well, some things do need to be regulated. I mean, I think the role of government, not to get too much into that, yeah. <laughs> is to properly regulate the areas that need to be regulated and be hands-off in the other areas um, that we can police ourselves. Exactly. But I do think that there are, especially when it comes to big companies and it comes to issues like this, yes, I think government definitely has a role. Yeah. You can't just let everything just happen, just, you know, exactly. uh, like a free-for-all. Yeah, and especially with this, because what makes this so bad is it takes so long. Mm -hmm. You know, it takes five years for this stuff to start to show up yeah. at, at any at any level in the body that can cause health problems. Mm -hmm. Um I wanted to talk about a study, though. They tested the cord blood of 230 newborn infants. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Now, the cord blood, so as the baby come out, they took a sample of the cord blood, and they have found every chemical that I've discussed so far on the show. Mm. Everything, BPA, phthalates, uh, um, atrazine, everything I've discussed so far was found in alarming levels. So we're born toxic. You know, it comes from the mom is toxic, that and, and that, that goes into the baby. So, you know, it, it's important that we try to get this stuff out of our kids, even if you're not putting any in. Mm -hmm. You know, they're born toxic. And, in fact, one researcher, that the, the author of this study, this was his quote, and I quote, each time we look for the latest chemical of concern in cord blood, we find it. Our research strongly suggests that the health of all children is threatened by trace amounts of hundreds of synthetic chemicals coursing through their bodies from the earliest stages of life, end quote. So, you know, I'm not the only one talking about this, but it, it just really needs to be looked at. And, you know, parents need to be aware. Wash what you need. You know, if you can wash it, Wash it if you can throw it in the washer. If it's a soft toy or something, you know, just make that standard. Everything gets a bath before they, you know, before they play with it. Now, heavy metals are something that come from places other than just lead paint. You know, um, a lot of times we get mercury from lots of different places. Um, a lot of times medication can have mercury, some you know, some vaccinations can have mercury. Some uh, definitely fish has mercury. Um, so mercury is a very, very toxic uh, thing for the body, as is lead and, and cadmium and all these other heavy metals. So, you know, heavy metals have a very specific way to get rid of them uh, out of the body. There's a couple of really specific uh, supplements that you can take that bind onto heavy metals and get them out of the body. One of the great ones we use is something called zeolite, and it's made from volcanic ash, and it's really good at just soaking up these heavy metals and getting them out of the body. So, you know, that's always a big consideration uh, that, that we look at whenever we have kids with, you know, different health problems, and a lot of the health problems I've mentioned, you know, the concentration issues and things like that. A lot of times these, these heavy metals or some of these chemicals can be you know, a big part of that. And if we can get rid of those things, or at least, you know, like I said, you can't get rid of them, but if we can at least reduce them to the point where they're insignificant, it can make a huge difference in helping these kids be healthier, not just now, but for the rest of their life. And that's such an important thing to do because these things are cumulative. They build up. They will not make you sick today. They won't make you sick tomorrow, but you add up all of these different things. The average American now takes in 14 pounds of chemicals, toxins, and, and, and pesticides every single year. So, Brandon, to give you a visual on that, mm -hmm. you know when we were kids, the big box of Tide, the big washing powder with the handle on top, mm -hmm. you know, it was about three foot tall and about two foot wide? Yeah. yeah. That's like 12 pounds. Yeah. So just imagine, for you listeners out there, if I brought a box of that soap to your house, each one for you, one for your spouse, one for each kid with a bunch of spoons. And I said, I need y'all to each eat this entire box of soap this year. This is from birth now. And I'm going to bring you another one for your baby next year and next year and next year. Imagine by the time they're four or five or six or seven, they would start experiencing or, or showing signs of some of these kind of health problems. 
it's because, number one, the cord blood itself has toxins in it. And then from the time they're born, these toxins begin to build up. So we're going to close out the show. Whenever we get back, we're going to discuss some tips and some things you need to know this Christmas season to make all of this better. So don't go away. We'll be right back. Welcome back to Get Well Acadiana with Dr. Kevin. Thank you so much for joining us on this very important show today. We're discussing the toxic level in toys that our kids are exposed to and really in other things in their environment as well. And listen, guys, I'm not trying to be a Scrooge or, you know, I'm not trying to like, you know, kill the party or anything like that. This is just something that is affecting our kids' health. And of course, I let my kid play with toys. He's got, a, he's got a room full of toys, but I've taken every precaution possible. And, you know, the other thing, Brandon, that we did, too, is I almost trained him not to put things in his mouth. Mm-hmm. And once they get, like, two, you can kind of do that. You can train, you know, if, if you work with them enough, you can train kids just out of habit not to stick everything in their mouth. Mm-hmm. And Creed actually did pretty good with that. You yeah. know, after I worked with him and worked with him and worked with him, you know, he kind of knew, like, not just not to stick things in his mouth that didn't belong there. But, you know, things are getting better. Yeah. Well, and I think the tip that you gave early on in the show, talking about, you know, giving your toys a bath, I think it's something that uh, makes the toy that much more relatable to the child because right. it's what the child goes through. Um, and, uh, you know, instead of them just putting it right in their mouth yeah. like they do as kids, getting, getting all the harmful uh, chemicals, getting a bunch of those off uh, before they really start playing with the toy. Yeah, Absolutely. Mm-hmm. And, and, you know, what's interesting as well is uh, when I was kind of, you know, getting ready for the show, um, I was reading uh, a little bit uh, um, of a report that came out that dealt with, you know, some of the other ones as well, like arsenic and other chemicals. But it really shined the light on the good that's being done to combat lead. We all know about lead. Mm-hmm. And so I was reading from uh, a representative from the Ecology Center, and this was a, a study done out in Michigan. And it was basically showing how, um, you know, they had found lead in 20% of the toys tested, and that was this year. But even that number has gone down from last year. And it's because of all the attention that's been placed on it. And so shows like this and other shows, uh, you know, and, and other people across the country that are putting a spotlight on lead, now it's reducing lead and its effects on, you know, this group of kids and, and, and adults that are coming up as well. And so it goes to show that if you can continue to put the spotlight on these chemicals, you talked about BPA earlier, then all of a sudden that can become the new lead. And then all of a sudden we can start getting, you know, companies to be more responsible in that area as well. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. And, 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 you know, vote with your pocketbook. Yeah. You know, I mean, if something is made with, you know, if you see something that's BPA free, if you're looking at baby bottles, and you see one that's BPA free and one that doesn't say that, mm-hmm. get the BPA free one. Yeah. And that's going to promote, you know, that's way, you know, that's kind of how you can help things along is just vote with your pocketbook. And chances are it'll probably be a little bit more expensive, but I know I've heard you say multiple times, you're either going to pay for it now, or you're going to pay for it later. And why not pay a little bit more for it now in increments as opposed to if the health uh, effects start building up and then you got to then you really get hit hard paying it in your later years. Absolutely. Absolutely. So I really appreciate you guys tuning in. You know, um, this is an important issue. And like I said, I'm not trying to be the Scrooge or anything. I want your kid to play with toys. But, you know, we need to take some action to try to make sure that uh, things are safe. You can look at paint and tell if it probably has lead in it. Lead paint has a certain shininess and a certain glow about it that's why they put it in there because it makes it look brighter and more you know so if just take a look if something's chipping if you're if your kid has a toy and you look at it and the paint's chipping off of it get rid of it you know just take precautions and try to curb this and it will make a big big difference so some other christmas tips before we close out the show first of all a few holiday eating tips and listen um We're not going to spend a lot of time on this, but number one, just watch your portions. Treat yourself to a nice drink, a dessert, anything else you want, but just watch your portion sizes. Um, That's where uh, that that's what gets everybody, you know, this holiday season. Instead of sugary drinks or beer, you might try wine. You know, wine is a little better for you. Um, And also don't feel guilty. You know, if you're on a diet or you're trying to watch your 
you're trying to lose weight or, or, or watch your, your figure, and you decide to eat for Christmas and you just want to eat whatever you want, that's no problem. But then the next day, get right back on it. My point I'm trying to make, what I'm trying to say here is don't let that one day throw you off of your meal plan from here on out. Mm. So enjoy your Christmas day. Eat whatever you want on that. That's what I do. Eat whatever you want that one day and then get right back on your diet plan the very next day. Don't let it just throw you off completely. And then second is to reduce holiday stress. You know, I, so many times I ask people, hey, you ready for Christmas? And they'll go, I'll be so glad when it's over. Come on, you know, come on, guys. Don't get so stressed out. Enjoy yourself. You know, like I said, um, I use Amazon. I have no shopping stress or traffic stress. Everything comes to my front door. Um, and so, number one, don't stress over money. Budget your money. So many people end up at the end of Christmas with a huge debt. Um, if you have a large family, agree to just buy you know, the kids, like what in my family, we just buy for the kids. Us adults, we don't all give each other stuff. I mean, we don't, you know, we don't really need that. We're grownups. Um, and so if, if money is a problem, just try to budget that. And, you know, everybody is going to understand. Uh, 75% of the people say they dislike Christmas shopping. Uh, so, you know, that's why I like Amazon so much. I can just push a button and it shows up. And then also, for everybody out there listening, we don't realize how stressful all of the cooking is for the person doing the cooking. Offer them help. You know, we always sit and watch football and wonder what's taking so long for the food, and we've got one or two people in the kitchen stressed out to the max. So go help them. If they say, I got it, help out anyway. You know, they're probably stressed to the max. So thank you guys so much for joining us on the show today. I appreciate each and every one of you out there listening and taking action steps to solve today's most complicated health problems. So thanks for listening. We'll see you guys next week.